The coronavirus pandemic has no doubt dealt the global community a big blow as countries across the world continue to grapple with the second wave. Lagos, the epicenter in Nigeria, has been developing capacity to halt the spread of the virus and doing everything possible to keep its economy afloat. Welcome to Inside Lagos. I'm Adi Doja. Salam Adeniyi. <laughs> No woman or child should die from normal life enhancing process of procreation in Lagos. And that's the reason behind the newly constructed maternal and child care center in Badagri. Inside Lagos picks it up from the inauguration of a housing scheme in the same town of Badagri by Governor Babaji Desan. We'll have a listen. Residents of Badagri welcoming Governor Babaji Desanwolu to the ancient town. The governor and his team are here to fulfill their themes agenda in housing and health projects. First, a set of 255 homes that have become the first green and eco-friendly estate in Lagos and Nigeria. Governor Sonwolu says it is part of efforts to reduce the housing deficit challenge in the state. If, 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 uh, an estate that will indeed reduce the cost of maintenance. You can see what we've said to ourselves will not come to any of our estate if it is not lit up, if it is not pipe on water, and these have come with everything. Everything that needs to be completed has been completed in this estate. And you can see that clearly it's been well, well, well finished. But what is in the quality of finishing if our people cannot afford it? And so it has come also with the lowest of costs pricing and like i did mention to them we will take everything that has not been taken and we'll push everything into our rent to home long-term scheme this we do not want people to pay an amount it's under 10 million it's about eight or seven we don't even know the right price that will bring it down but it is indeed affordable and even for the affordability we want people to be able to pay over a longer period of time you know as a government while we've been elected here is to make life easy and to make it comfortable for our citizens. And so we're not going to push you under the pressure and ask you to write us a single check. No, we will work with you, we will sit with you and we'll ensure that over the period, if it is 10 years, if it is 15 years, we will sit with you and we will ensure that you have a decent home and you will pay gradually so that you can have the comfort and the ambience that is deserving of it. And so for us, this is just a starting of a long relationship. The phase two of this project will be across the road there. And I've asked them that once we complete this, you know, we should just move to the phase two. And the phase two has waterfront. You know, this is another shoreline. This is staying in Ikoyi of Badagri or staying in Victoria Island of Badagri, which will have single dwelling and all of it. And we will ensure that it's also cost efficient like this. It's affordable and it's accessible. And on the road as well, you can see that it's more terrible, but we're also going to try and finish up um, 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 this road. So what are we about? We're about ensuring that we deliver quality to our citizens. We're about ensuring that what we promise our citizens, what we promise negotiations, we are continuing to meet it. And after this place, we're completing a 660 in Igoen Godo very, very shortly. You know, um, we're also completing work in Ajara, Ajara Badagri, it's, it's just down the road here, where we have 420 units. Um, I want to um, charge, I'm not congratulating them yet, I'm sure they have other ones in Igbogbo Bayeku, um, about 360, we have another one in Shogutedo, about 744, we have another one in Ibishe, that were pushed, LSDPC and Ministry of Housing, about another 420. 
We are hoping that all these houses will be completed before the middle of this year and we can go out and hand over um, the keys to our citizens. So what we're about is to ensure that whilst we create that environment for our people to be homeowners because it's one of the real essence of where we're living. Everybody wants a place to, to put his head at the end of the day. Work will also commence on Workers' Village in the Chef Mayobo with 608 bedroom flats. The Workers' Village at Imota with 501 home made up of two bedroom and three bedroom flats, which is a joint venture scheme, will also take off. Our desire is to grant easy access to home ownership for our workers and their family. <laughs> After the inauguration of the reconstructed 5.5 kilometer long hospital road, next was the health infrastructure. Governor Sonwolu inaugurates the School of Anesthesia and new MCC at the Badagri General Hospital to address the twin issues of maternal and child deaths in Lagos State. It has a radiology center. Of course, it takes care of pediatrics, which are the little children. It addresses family planning issues and all the immunizations that they need to have. Given the issues we have the pandemic right now, the great people that are on the front line are anesthetics and people that commander has trained, you know, out of this facility. They've trained over 130 doctors from what I hear and they've trained over 65 nurses that they can stand and conduct the, 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 the study and get people to sleep and wake them up when I haven't taken them to sleep. God will continue to strengthen you. The least you can do is to make sure that the environment you are doing and you are conducting that exercise is befitting and it's something that is worthy of emulation. So for us, it's really what we should be doing that we're doing. I want to thank you for all of the great works that we're doing. But I want to say that the story is not ending with Badagri. This is the third MCC that we're commissioning, but there's still a lot more that we're bringing out. Out of this commissioning, very, very soon, we'll also be commissioning the MCC in a way. Just for you to know that we're spreading development all around our state, and we're not reducing it to anywhere. And just after that, we're doing extensive renovation in three of our general hospitals. The general hospital in Lagos, extensive renovation that is going to come with the first class, you know, um, centers of radiology and all of the things that in the next nine months to 12 months you'll see what general hospital lagos will look like the new massive children's hospital has also been awarded is going to come out in lagos island once we're unveiling that you'll see what what new facilities will be coming to lagos not only the new massive children's hospital because we're also in the c19 era which we call the covid 19 the lagos will also be building for the future so an infectious disease center We'll also coming up at the Infectious Disease Hospital, which is IDH in Yaba. And also, we're also planning to build a proper isolation center in Yaba. So these will be some of our plans for our health facility, for our health infrastructure, for our health sector. 
which is an important arm on our team's agenda. They have said it, health and environment is the first H in our agenda and we're committed to it. Governor Babajide Sonwolu says no going back on school's resumption as the second wave of COVID-19 worsens. He attributed safety from domestic violence as the major reason for insisting on the reopening of schools. This is the Lagos State Governor's first COVID-19 briefing for the year. The epidemiological update. Top on his agenda was Let the school's the resumption number. that has come with mixed reactions. Schools in Lagos reopened on Monday, 18th of January, with the new staggered system introduced by the government to reduce the number of pupils at all schools. Governor Sonwolu explains the rationale behind the school's reopening in the face of the positivity rate of COVID-19. It was a very difficult decision to make in light of the second wave of COVID-19. But I can assure you that it was the best decision for her children at this time as their safety and long-term development, especially our most vulnerable children. We have considered all of the prognosis before we took this decision. The staff and management of the Ministry of Education, the Office of Quality Assurance in the Ministry, have all been monitoring compliance of both the public and the private schools with the safety policies and protocols laid out. And I can assure you that on a daily basis, we will be monitoring the level of compliance and how things are turning out. You know, and we're just hoping and believing that people will do the right thing. And so I want to enjoy parents to ensure that the protocols of safety are adhered to at homes and that they model responsible behaviors for their children at all times in and out of their home. If you remember, what we're doing is that we're not actually even bringing all the, school, all the children to school. So they're doing one day on, one day off. At best, it's two days or three days that they're coming to school. So we're not crowding the classes. We're also not crowding the pupils to come all at once. So they've also spread out, you know, the numbers and their, their furniture that well spread out to reflect that social distance. And why do we need to do that? There's something that we also would not communicate. And it's the fact that Last year, when after the first lockdown and kids have to come back to school, we're still looking for about 24,000 children that have not come back to school. And so the, there's a challenge. If you keep them out for that long, their, their parents or their guidance now turn them to other things, right? Instead of ensuring that they still have time to come back and have a learning, even if it's twice a week, even if it's three times a week, at least it's been registered, he has a class, it's the beginning of a session, Right, and you can monitor them. Once some of those things are in, we just don't want to throw them because they will just be roaming and be, be, they, they, they become endangered. You know, you've seen incidents of you know, child abuse, all sort of, I mean, um, um, unprintable things that are being done to, to, these, to these children. So we believe to a large extent that school sometimes happens to be the safe heaven for them. You know, and, and we've, 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 we've done a road start in which we we'll ensure that you know, they keep social and we're monitoring. We have not said that our, our position is sacrosanct and it cannot be reviewed a week down the line, right? That's, that, that is not, is not, is not, is not an end to end. It's something that if we realize and we see that compliance are also not, I mean, our people are not taking responsibility, we make a recall. That's why decisions will be reviewed from time to time, right? So join us in this, in this conversation and let's see, you know, how things turn out. We have also looked at the other side of it, you know, and I can assure you that we're, we're not unmindful of the science. We're also not unmindful of the social issues that comes with, with some of this, some of this issue. Figures from the NCDC shows Lagos has 41,400 confirmed cases out of the 32,000 cumulative tests conducted. The state government has discharged 32,296 patients and lost 276 people. But 8,828 patients are still on admission and most of them require oxygen therapy. The governor says with the behavioral pattern of the second wave of COVID-19, they have decentralized the availability of oxygen across 10 centers of the state. The increase in the positivity of cases has necessitated the provision of a greater amount of concentrated oxygen for the moderate to severe cases 
on admission at the isolation centers. Over the past, over the last few weeks, the demand for oxygen has risen from 70 bottles of 60 liter cylinder per day to as high as 350 six cylinder, six liter cylinder at only our Yaba uh, mainland hospital. This is projected to even double as we're expecting that we might have a need to up to 700 six cylinder, six liter cylinders before um, the middle of February, towards the end of January into the middle of February. In addition to providing oxygen at our isolation center, the state government has decentralized the availability of oxygen across the state through the provision of 10 oxygen and sampling kiosks. This oxygen therapy and other related services will be provided to patients that require them. I'm glad to let you know that five of these 10 centers have been commissioned, whilst the remaining five will be ready within the next three to four weeks. And of course, it's important for us to mention that the five that has been commissioned are inside the MCC at Etiosa, the MCC at Alimosho, their purpose-built um, oxygen triad centers uh, at Koka Aguda, primary health center at Mushin General Hospital and Isolo General Hospital. It is our expectation that this sampling kiosk will be easily accessible to residents that require oxygen therapy at the level of the local government and a stabilization point prior to their onward transmission to our isolation center if required. This strategy is to further increase our fighting chance of Lagos residents that have contacted the virus and require oxygen therapy. As a result of the increased demand of oxygen, the Lagos State Government has commissioned the oxygen plant at the Yaba Mainland Hospital, and we're waiting to receive in the next week or so additional two. One will be cited at Bagada um, General Hospital, and the other one with the PPP will be cited at the Lassut um, Hospital in Ikeja. The one at Lassut should be able to produce about 200 bottles per day. The one at Bagada is about the same size as mainland, so it's about 60 to 70 bottles per day. We're also collaborating with some of our uh, private sector. We've had discussions with some companies that can also help us scale up oxygen production, and we just sign up one, and we're expecting to get between 150 to 200 bottles from that single facility on a daily basis. The state testing capacity has now increased from 3,000 to 4,000 per day. The incident commander urged people who have malaria symptoms like to visit government facilities for free testing and immediate management. One of the greatest hallmark of the Lagos State response has been the state's robust testing strategy. In addition to the four public laboratories providing free testing under the public health response, the state has increased the number of private providers under the private laboratory consortium to 20 private laboratories. These laboratories are also providing service to both our inbound and outbound international travelers, work-related activities, or anyone that is curious about their COVID-19 status. The formation of the consortium has significantly increased our testing capacity, with the state now conducting between 2,500 to as high as 3,500, almost 4,000 tests per day. So far, a total of 263,358 tests has been conducted between our public and our private laboratories, with 41,374 diagnosed as positive. This has allowed us the opportunity to target our interventions with precision and ensure the effective use and mobilization of resources. It is important to clarify once again that those that fall within the case definition, that is, have symptoms such as fever, cough, cold, inability to smell or taste, have headaches or general body weaknesses, or those who come in contact 
with anyone with any of these symptoms may be eligible for a free testing at any of our public laboratories. Our telemed service, called the ECO Telemed, has been deployed to assist in the management of residents in the comfort of their homes. Available to reach on this toll-free line is 08000 ECOMED. 08000 ECOMED or 08000 356 633. 08000 356 633. The telemed service is manned by professional medical personnel to help nurse infected individuals back to health. They also have the ability to access the severity of patients' condition and facilitate the evacuation of worsening cases if need be. In addition, they also assist in facilitating the delivery of the Lagos State COVID-19 care packs, which contain items that can be supported affected residents. I enjoy Lagosians to take advantage of this service. I can tell you as your governor, I have tried them. And you can be rest assured that it's life. They have capable and professionally trained staff at the other side to be able to listen and take the complaints that you might require. Governor Babajide Sonwolu also urged residents of Lagos to live and act responsibly by wearing their face masks everywhere and also follow the social distancing guidelines and other safety protocols to flatten the second wave curve before the arrival of the vaccine. And that's a package on this edition of Inside Lagos. Many thanks for being a part of it. Before we go, let's remind you that the cases of COVID-19 is still out there. So observe all the safety protocols. Thank you for being there. Amadi Doja. Salam Adini.